Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the EFG Show. That's a show where myself, Steven Dutzman, and Mr. Jeff Walker from the Frozen North come together and talk about all of the family-friendly video game news that is fit to bring to the airwaves. Jeff, how are you this week? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Sorry about your Vikings. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, they, you can tell Evan at least they got the Saints out of there. Yeah, um, he uh, he knows. He is uh, not pleased, but here we are. So it is Thursday, um, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about because a lot happened this week. I'm very excited because after a very slow holiday season, video game news-wise, finally we can depend on there being stuff to talk about. Man, do we have a bunch of stuff to share some hot takes. Um, I know we, we put out some questions to the audience, and um, we got some folks that gave us uh, some, you know, well, we had one person give us a question, so we're going to go ahead and answer that. But before we do it, I actually have an announcement to make. So this is a project that has been being worked on by Team EFG for uh, two or three months now, and I am happy to say that on Saturday at noon... Um, we're going to be launching our official EFG Minecraft Realm. Um, which means, for those people that are not part of the cool initiated Minecraft people, because I certainly was not until it was explained to me, um, we're going to have our own private EFG fan server. Um, it's going live at noon on Saturday. We're going to have a live stream up on our Facebook page. The server was actually built by my son Evan who has been a part of EFG for a very long time. He made a really cool spawn zone with this giant tree that he kind of crafted himself. It's super cool watching it all go live. Um, so if you are one of those folks that super duper wants to play in an EFG realm for Minecraft, um, it's not exactly a public server because we don't want creeps. So um, the best thing to do is send a message to the EFG Facebook page. Um, that's engagefamilygaming.com slash Facebook, although you're probably watching that on this video on the Facebook page. Send us a, uh, a message with your Xbox Live username, um, and uh, we will whitelist you so that you may uh, participate in all the shenanigans. Um, the plan is to let people play. It's a cooperative game. We're not encouraging PvP, um, and it's meant to just... PvP is actually off. PvP is off. So we're not, not only are we not encouraging it, but he turned it straight up off. Um, and we're just going to be, re, we're going to be refreshing the server, meaning restarting it and restarting all progress once a year. Um, so every year at New Year's Eve, from now on, we'll go ahead and refresh it. So everybody have a chance to play. We might refresh it earlier if everybody wants us to. We're not really sure yet. This is kind of moving along. So that's the big announcement, Jeff. I've been keeping it secret, even from the staff. That is right. We knew nothing about it, and maybe it's time I actually learn how to play some Minecraft. Listen, this is going to be a great op, and I I think that this is that that's actually true. This is going to be a great opportunity, um, because it's going to be a low key, casual environment, I believe, um, where people can hop in and learn a little bit and engage with the community. Um, that's what we're using it for. Uh, Evan is super excited. He's kind of the, the man in charge of this. So, mm -hmm. um. If you want to come over here and say some stuff, just come over here and say some stuff. He's sitting on the couch over there. He was playing Switch, but as soon as he heard me say Minecraft, he perked right up. Okay. So, um, did you explain about the requirements of joining it on consoles other than Xbox? Yeah, Xbox. everybody needs to just sign up for an Xbox Live username. If you don't have one, then um, just Google how to sign up for an Xbox Live, you know, Xbox Live username. On another console, it's not super hard. No, it's really not. All you need is an email. And then once you have an Xbox Live username, you message us on the Facebook page, and either he or I will whitelist you within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That's it. Boom. Up to 10 people can be on the server at one time, which I do not think will be a big problem. Um, I think it's going to be relatively small, but you know what? If it gets nuts, then we'll have multiple servers. What are we going to do? Turn, if this turns into this crazy popular thing, then we'll do multiple servers. They're yeah. only six bucks a month, so it's okay. So um, okay. that's our big announcement. Yep, yeah. okay. So right. thank you, Evan. Uh, so tune in uh, live Saturday, this Saturday, at noon, for the launch stream 
And uh, Evan and I are going to be flying around the realm, showing everybody some of the interesting features, and exploring this really cool tree thing that he built. This which tree is, pretty is awesome. really cool. The tree is pretty cool. I can't wait to show you. I spent. A he can't wait of to days, show. A month building it. He, yeah, he did spend about a month building it, um, largely because, you know, he had other stuff going on, but it was a while. So. Okay. Thank you, Evan. I'm going to go back yeah. to work now. So. That's it. That's the big announcement, Jeff. I That's think. awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty neat little opportunity for the fans and maybe some of our fans' kids to get involved and, and play. Um, again, this is going to be a heavily moderated server. Don't mind my kids laughing to the left of me. It's going to be a heavily moderated server. No creeps, obviously, because you're going to have to get whitelisted. And also, um, you know, people get all trolly, then we'll just get rid of them. So, um, yeah, that's it. Very excited Saturday, and uh, we're going to be streaming it right here on the Facebook page. Um, so we did get a fan that asked us a question. Uh, it was Pat Kenevy, right? I just lost sound. That's troubling. Jeff, you can you hear me? We're having some technical difficulties. That's what happens when you just do this live. Oh, I'm getting a text message from Jeff. He can't hear me. Um, I'm going to tell Jeff. Um, I'm telling him to get going because he is not frozen, nor am I. Um, all right, so don't mind the random Skype symbol. Um, I will add him in a moment. So we had someone, uh, we had one fan send us a message asking a question. Um, specifically, they were asking for us to share our hot takes about uh, the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC versus ultra versions of the DLC. Um, not the DLC, but like ultra versions of the Pokemon games. Um, and so I thought I would, uh, you know, well, let me, let's give Jeff an opportunity to get in here. The, let's see here, bear with me everybody. We're doing a little dance. Oh, he's not online, so he's restarting his whole computer. So, uh, Got a couple people watching in the chat. How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody doing okay? What's up, everybody? Jeff is having some technical difficulties. He is re rebooting his computer. Because apparently I froze for him, but I definitely didn't freeze. Uh, and what was weird is his stuff was still coming to me. It was very odd. So, you know, technology. So, um... Anybody have any uh, gaming-related questions or otherwise that you'd like to ask? I am an open book until Jeff comes back. All right, it looks like he's back online. Let's see how it works now. Hello. Hey, Sorry. what's up? I how don't know. Like, my internet just decided it didn't want to internet. That's all right. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> Uh, I was about internet hated us, and that's okay. So, um, okay. So we had one fan, Patrick Kenevy. Kenevy? Yeah. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, so I'm sorry, Patrick, if I am butchering your name. Um, so, um, he asked for our hot takes. Specifically, and it was about the Pokemon stuff, and I know we talked about it in the last episode, but um, I, I think specifically... He's asking a question that we didn't really address before. And so I thought it would be a good idea to do so. So um, his specific question is that he wanted our hot takes comparing the DLC, uh, the Ultra Sun, or not the Ultra Sun, the Sword and Shield expansion passes to like an Ultra version. So like Ultra Sword and Ultra Shield. Um, whether what we would have preferred. So Jeff, I'll let you go first. Yes, yeah, so I think the expansion passes are the right way to go. I mean, I'm looking at it even from a financial standpoint. If we were going to have the 
Ultra Sun or Ultra Sword, Ultra Shield, or even just one third version, we would be paying a full $60 title. Yep. I know back on the 3DS and DS they were $40, but now, you know, the reality is these games are going to cost $60 a pop. So you'd be That's spending correct. a $120. Yep. You are correct. Um, and with this expansion pass just taking place in the same story and you get to use the same team, it takes out my least favorite part about the th- the third version, and that is that we don't... We don't have to start have to, over, right? We don't have to start over because, you know, the third versions are cool, but really, they don't really change the story or what you're doing. Mm-hmm. They might add a few something with a different legendary or a go all the way back to yellow version. It was more like the anime. But really, you know, I don't have time to play through the exact same story again. Agreed. I, I'm 100% with you. Um... My hot take is pretty much just like yours. I think, um, from a financial perspective, the only reason, you know, and we did some homework on this uh, in the interim between last episode and this one. So, DLC follows the, the DLC follows the account that purchased it, and if it is on your account and it is on your primary switch. Other users can access that data. Okay. So, the issue that you run into is if you have two copies of the game and are playing it on two Switches. Because DLC doesn't move from Switch to Switch. At least, not that we have tried. I have been... A f- so... The, so I guess maybe I have got I have gotten like half of the answer. This is one of those things that we're just gonna have to wait until it comes out and try it. But well, and if you have the two copies, the only way I think they would work is if they're two copies of Sword or two copies of Shield. Sword and Shield each have their yeah. own expansion pass. That's a hundred percent true. So either way, if you have both copies of the game, you're gonna have to buy that DLC twice. Um, you're going to have to buy each DLC. The question is whether or not you'd have to buy each DLC twice, once for, you know, once each for each Switch. Yeah. I feel like, at, but the reality is, at that point, it's kind of a wash to just buy, having to buy two extra copies of the game, which you would probably have to do if you were, you know, because if you're two, two people playing both copies of the game, it's just insane, just thinking about that. So, that is where it breaks down, but, um... The, the fact that if you're one person, even if you're going to play both versions, you're it's, it's 60 bucks, but it's the same cost as buying it. Yeah. You know, I, I am I'm perplexed by the cost aspect, but the fact that you're able to play the game without having to restart is pretty important to me. Um, I know that a lot of people that are mad. <laughs> um, I would rather this than having to buy another cartridge. Yeah, I mean, and you've said yourself that it's really hard. You hardly ever finish a Pokemon game. Yeah, there's no this... way I would finish a second Pokemon yeah. game with the same party. As it is, I'm probably not going to play this DLC. This DLC is for my kids. This is for the hardcore Pokemon fans in the house. I will finish Shield, and I'll probably be done and live vicariously through them. Um, so I will, and I will definitely be picking it up. So maybe I'll have to write an article for the site. Sure. Explaining it. Yes. We're, we're going to... I did some research. I got like half of the answer. What's interesting is Nintendo has not made any real official comments on this. Like normally they have an FAQ. Their FAQ on the Pokemon site is more... It is all about you have to buy the Sword Pass for the Sword game and the Shield Pass for the Shield game. Like that's their... That's what their FAQ says so far. It doesn't talk about any kind it doesn't talk about the sharing aspect or if it's possible or how any of that works which and, which is fair because they very rarely talk about that stuff yeah but going off of that i think that's going to cause a lot of problems for when parents are trying to buy this for their kids though that they have to have the specific expansion pass a um, lot of ki- i think i think most kids only have one version 
Yes, but do the parents remember what version they have, or do they just think, oh, it's well, Pokemon? Not, but you're buying it on the eShop anyway. Like, you're not buying this yeah. in the store. You're buying yeah, it true. on the eShop, which they're going to be buying from the menu. True, true. Didn't which think of that. we do know that, and they've confirmed this, that when you go to Pokemon Shield and you go to purchase DLC, it's going to bring you to the, I mean, assuming there's not a bug or anything, it's going to bring you to the page for Pokemon Shield. And it's going to, for the Pokemon Shield expansion pass. And it'll say, and it'll check to, to you know, if you have the, the game, it'll say, hey, this is the correct DLC pack for you. Um, I'm not super worried about it because they're not going to put a boxed edition of the game. Um, with that said, you know, we talk about Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, whatever. Um, if you want to tell me that a year from now or two years from now they're not going to just release a copy of this game that includes the dlc you crazy i'm just gonna you know I, I don't know because it's nintendo and nintendo rarely does that you can't buy breath of the wild with all its dlc you have, still have to buy xenoblade chronicles 2 separately from its expansion but its expansion was standalone that's different like you could play the xenoblade chronicles 2 expansion without it Legend of Zelda Touche. Um, I just I don't like... think can't you can't you can't even buy Pokemon Tournament with all its DLC. You can get it from the DLC from the Wii U days, but not the ones they released on Switch. Actually, I don't think there was DLC on the Wii U days, but they added the extra characters. But they still haven't released a copy with just its DLC. Okay, all right. So maybe I'm maybe I'm just assuming. <laughs> I would not be surprised, but you 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 are probably right. I'm being a little generous. Nintendo doesn't really do that stuff. Um, either way, um, I would I, I absolutely prefer it this way to, to the Ultra Sun games. If for like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, whatever, because being able to keep your same party is amazing. It's such a yes, it's such a, a quality of life improvement. Huge fan of that. Um, so that's our hot take, Pat. Appreciate you asking the question. Um, I mean. The, the other hot take is I think a lot of the people that had hot takes were wrong because <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> um, it's cool to go against the grain nowadays. Yeah, supposedly. well, especially if you make YouTube videos. So, yeah. um, But guess what? We're not like them. We're making YouTube videos and podcasts, and we're actually being positive. So there's that. So, Jeff, you put some work together, and some video games actually came out this week. Um, so why yes. don't we hop right on over to Jeff's release list that you posted on the Facebook page on Sunday. All right. And we actually have some games to talk about this week that are kind of big coming out. Yep. We'll start out with a Monday, January 13th, Jump Gunners for Switch came out. Okay. I know nothing uh, of this game. Me neither. I mean, half the games that come out for Switch, I don't know anything about because they're downloadable games and I, I don't know if the switch has very high you know support on figuring out what's a bad game and what's a good game to I put really on the doesn't. system it really doesn't you, you just kind of gotta wing it which is it's like the complete opposite of back in the day when they had the nintendo seal of quality well i mean that's a long time gone brother they, that was <laughs> gone for the wii so um uh, they don't okay. do that anymore <laughs> Continuing, we have quite a few games on Tuesday, January 14th. We'll have Anim Animal Friends Adventure for the Xbox One. Okay. And then, for sorry for friends, fans of the Atelier series, I am going to butcher these names. Oh, man, I can't wait. I cannot wait for you to... I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, man, Jeff's going to have to pronounce an Atelier game. Go for it. Yeah. So, we have Atel... And it's Atelier, right? I think so. You pronounce the R? Okay. You definitely I actually, pronounce the R. I have a coworker who's a fan of these games, and she tried to tell me how to pronounce it, and I still mess up. All right. So Atelier, Aisha, The Alchemist of Dusk DX. Okay. Atelier, Esha and Logi, Alchemist of the Dusk. Atelier, Shali, Alchemist of the Dusk C. Oh, Sorry, the Atelier Yesha and Logi is Alchemist of the Dusk Sky. Sky. Then Atelier Shali is Alchemist of the Dusk Sea. These are all coming out for PS4 and Switch, or you can buy all three of them together in the Atelier Dusk Trilogy. Sure. I sure. believe 
these were they're they're definitely re-releases. I don't know how long ago oh. the original games came out. I just got feedback from an audio guy who said that I sound really far from my mic, and there's a reason for that. It's because my mic is really far away. So thank you, <laughs> Brian. My mic was very far away. So, um, what are you gonna do? So okay, so that's the Atelier series or yes. Atelier. I'm not really sure. That I have never played them. I know they're an RPG, and they have a pretty big fan base. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know who absolutely adores them is the Infinite co-host, my brother Michael. He okay loves those games. I I know I've been doing this list for about a year and a couple months now, and I notice these games release pretty periodically throughout the year. Yep, they're especially on. There Switch. are a lot of them. So I think what they're doing in a lot of cases is kind of pushing the um, – they're just kind of pushing out re-releases, but I know they make a lot of them. They, they, they are not quite – I mean, they're a little bit more prolific than, say, like the Tales series, but they're in that vein. They're just an RPG series that is just never going to stop. Um, apparently, they're quite good. I have never played one. Um, I will probably play one eventually. That's right. my mentality about them as well. All right, so, so also on Tuesday, uh, Squidlet for Switch came out. Is that a Splatoon game? <laughs> I you don't can think say so. No. You can say no because it's probably <laughs> not. Um, are you a squid or are you a kid? Do uh, they even... In this case, you are definitely <laughs> a squid. <laughs> uh, and then the final game on Tuesday coming out is Super Mega Space Blaster Special Turbo. I, I think that name's just really awesome. It's probably not a very good game, but the name sounds cool. Yeah, I very much doubt that the game is good. Uh, but... Wednesday, January 15th, we have Demolish and Build 2018 for the Switch. Nice. I tell you, I had to recheck my sources. Like I searched it up to make sure... That there was not a typo, and no Nintendo site everywhere I looks at it is 2018. Yeah, all right, sure. Uh, Puzzle and Dragons Gold for the Switch, which I know is a popular series. I have not played the series. I wish I would have got around when they did the Mario one on the 3DS, but I just never got around to it. Yep. Um, and then Thursday, so today, what came out was Doggy Ninja, the Burning Strikers for the Switch. <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Maybe it's a hidden gem like Cat Quest. Yeah, I mean. Doubt it. Probably not. What else we got? Uh, a Dreamwalker, Never Fall Asleep for the Switch. Okay. Eclipse, Edge of Light for the Switch. Okay. Jurassic Excite for the Switch. Okay. My Tetsu Pier Station for the Switch. All right. That that looked like a visual novel, like one of those Japanese visual novel games, okay. almost like a dating sim type thing. Okay. Uh, Self for the Switch. Okay. Seek Hearts for the Switch. Okay. Super Crush KO for the Switch. There, that's one that was announced at E3. They sent out a press release, and I thought it looked really awesome. It's like a okay. side-scrolling action platformer, so that one I'm actually pretty excited about. And To the Moon for the Switch. Now, To the Moon is an RPG Maker game that is 100% guaranteed to make you cry. Okay. 100%. It sounded familiar. It's, so it's I'm a like... PC game. All right. And so today, uh, what can, or tomorrow, what comes out yep. on Friday? That's a big Tomorrow is a pretty big day. Uh, first of all, one of your most anticipated games, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Yep. For the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Yep. Not Switch. Uh, not Switch, Too fancy no. for that. Um, the Dark Samus Amiibo is coming out. Yep. Far Out for Xbox One. Okay. What's that one? I... Yeah, I don't know. All right. So what's next? Uh, Hovership Havoc for Xbox One. Okay. The Richter Amiibo. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure those are the final two Amiibo with the original roster from Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I believe that they are, which means now so, we've got the DLC. And DLC, we'll talk about which I'll in a minute. 
Um, and, you know, and we could probably talk about every DLC character since the AFG show hasn't really been on since any of the characters have been announced, I don't believe. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely, yeah. when we get to the news, we'll talk about that. So realistically, a whole lot of stuff just came out, it came out this week. But of all of them, I think the only real pick of the week is uh, Dragon Ball Kakarot, which... To oh, you're over... missing one. Which one? Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. Oh, all right. So... For the Switch. I mean, that's probably the better game. Out of the two of them, that's the one I have pre-ordered and it'll be showing up on my doorstep tomorrow. Okay. I mean, is it... I mean does Amazon actually deliver the games on time to you? Because it doesn't to me. So uh, just... I do Best Buy. Oh, all right. So Best Buy is probably better. <laughs> So Best, I, I have not had one come late from Best Buy. I have never been one of the lucky ones to get it early either. So Tokyo Mirage Session, Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp FE was amazing on the Wii U, um, but I traded it in because they gave me a really really good deal, um, and like to the point where. I traded it was it was nuts. So um, I can't even remember the numbers, but it was absolutely crazy. But the um, my kids are talking again. So, um, but I I want to play it again. Like I want to give it another try, especially because I know I like RPGs on the Switch. But, but um, I'm gonna have to wait because I want to play Dragon Quest first. Dragon Ball, or um, Dragon, or actual Dragon Quest. The, the Dragon Quest. I want to play Dragon Quest because oh, I still want to play Dragon really... Quest. Echoes of an Elusive Age. Um, Dragon Ball. Like I'm super hyped for that game, but it's one of those games that, as, as excited as I am, I don't think I'm going to play it. I will tell you when you get Dragon Quest, the first thing you need to do is look at the spine of the Switch, and like if that name had one more letter in it, it would not have fit on the spine of the Switch case. Um, I mean, yeah, it, they put a lot of, they put a lot of letters into that. It was a little crazy, but still, yeah, I mean, it, this is a great, this is, those two games definitely help if you are into, uh, Japanese stuff. Cause we got Dragon Ball, we got basically a Persona game. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I know that there's a lot of folks in the EFG discord, that are pretty excited about um, the her, the uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. It's super cool, super stylish. I think everybody needs to watch a video of it at the very least. I think everybody owes themselves um, five minutes of watching that on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, I will definitely say my wife, who does not play video games, I showed her the trailer, and she won't play the game, but she go, her first response was, I'd watch the anime. Yeah, all right. Well, you know what? That's high praise. That's high praise, she, um, because we know she is a discerning voice uh, when it comes to the animes. So, yeah, um, so that's it. That's the video game releases this week. Um, this year is moving very quickly, and um, we're we're gonna start getting to some pretty stacked weeks. January, the beginning of January is always slow, but Dragon Ball and Tokyo Mirage Sessions were just the beginning, and it's only yep. gonna get crazier for the rest of this year. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's just get right into the news. Um, so what do you want to do? You want to talk about delays or you want to talk about Smash? Well, since we just talked about how crazy it's getting, let's definitely talk about the delays first because that kind of – it thinned out people's schedules. Yeah. But then again, we don't know other games that may be released during this time. Okay. So um, there were three – Count them three significant delays that were announced over the last 48 hours. 40, is it 48? This week, at least. three. This week. S I can't remember if the – because are you talking about the new one that was just announced too? Yeah, we'll get there. I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah, so here we go. The one that was announced today as well. Um, and I had some thoughts on those that I pumped – yes, including today's. So um, I – Posted some thoughts. Uh, I recorded a quick podcast. You can find that under engagefamilygaming.com slash podcast uh, using the uh, EFG Daily Commute podcast to talk about it. But the two, there were two big delays earlier in the week and then one that was announced today that admittedly not family friendly, but it's important enough to talk about. So first, Final Fantasy was scheduled to come out on March 3rd, I believe. 
Yes. So and it has been delayed to April 10th. So that's the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, that was delayed about a month. That's a really big deal. A really big deal. And the reason for that is um and because and they wouldn't have moved it if it wasn't absolutely on fire they must have found something crazy is because square enix's fiscal year ends march 31st oh, so by I moving it out of, of march into april that means they have to take all those earnings that they would have gotten from uh, from final fantasy 7 remake selling during this fiscal year and move it into the next year, which means they're likely going to have to post an operating loss and they're a publicly traded company. That's a big deal. The board of directors, I'm sure is not going to be very happy. Investors probably not going to be very happy. They did not do that lightly, Um, which does give me pause for the actual final release of the game because, you know, it has to work, (laughs) right? Yeah. Um, But what do you think? And that's kind of what, especially this one, because it was only, you know, a month, a month and a half. And that my guess is that's what happened is they found some bug that they couldn't get fixed. And they just needed a little extra time to fix this bug. They probably have the main meat of the game already done and they need to find out how to fix that bug. Especially since Square Enix lately, nowadays, I feel like has a tendency to just keep bugs in their games. Um, I mean, like what? I'll, well, for example, I've been on my Xbox one. It is not a family friendly game, but I've been playing the original tomb Raider. Okay. So the, not, not the original, the original. Uh, the I remakes. know what you meant. Yeah. The first yeah. tomb Raider. There is a part in that game. And now this game came out in 2012. So 2012, 2015, a while. It, 15, I think, so four years ago. There's a part in that game where you are climbing a radio tower and you have to signal a radio. Okay. My problem is, at the very top, I had to search what was going on because Lara Croft's hands were not touching the radio dial. So when I spun my joysticks to make her spin the radio dial, she was spinning the air. Okay. But did the radio dial turn? Somewhat, okay. but it would not lock on to where it needs to be, and you couldn't see the needle because her hand was in the wrong place. Oh, okay. And her other hand was missing a finger. That's troubling. So did you yeah. find out what the answer was? Uh, the answer was that they patched it. <laughs> okay. Obviously not very well, and that I just had to restart my whole Xbox One and go through that section again. Sure. Took, And it took three times. So... I mean, so they, I'm just glad with them um, delaying the game that they're, you know, hopefully going to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen because, you know, what would have happened if, you know, I did it so many times and it kept not working? Eventually, I would just get rid of the game, quit playing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, okay, I get that. And I did not know, I mean, the... I. I don't know. I have a hard time saying that they just leave bugs in, but they clearly left a bug in. So I can't well, really. Yeah. And believe me, I love Square Enix. You, you know, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. That um, is correct. You are. And Pardon me, everybody. It's 930 at night on the East, on the East Coast. <laughs> so I'm. We're, um, we're both tired. Yeah. We, we've had long days. So. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Square Enix, one of my favorite companies. But, I mean, so when something like that happened, and I know it was Crystal Dynamics that published those games. Well, no, no, it's Crystal Dynamics developed them. Developed them. Square Enix published, yes. When something like that happens with a big company like that, it's just disappointing. I understand. And they must have found something significant with Final Fantasy VII Remake in order for them to have even thought about delaying it because woof I mean it, it, this is a big deal now another speaking of Crystal Dynamics I think speaking of Square Enix the other delay um, that was announced actually on the same day was Marvel's Avengers which was moved from 
I believe April. It was in May, right? The first May, week of May. That, was it the first? I thought it was the end of May. It was sometime in May. Sometime in May. You're right. End of May. Probably like the 24th or something like that. Yeah, I think it came out right before Memorial Day. And it was which... pushed until September. That is a significant switch. Now, it's still within the same fiscal year, so it's not going to have necessarily like financial ramifications. But that was a, that's a lot of time. Yeah. You know, moving a month is for polish. Right, like moving a month, it's a polish thing. Maybe fixing one big bug that they just know they needed X amount of man hours to fix. Um, but moving a game four months, that is significant. Now it's a live service game, so it could very well be that they pushed it so they could make sure that the live service pieces of it still worked or worked better. Um, because this game is going to live or die based on its multiplayer. But still, four months is a very long time. Um, and they pushed it out of a very crowded spring into the beginning of the holiday season, which is actually going to be interesting because it's going to be kind of crowded alongside, you know, getting ready for the new consoles. Um, but they were at least by themselves until today when Cyberpunk 2077 uh, was announced to be delayed until September 10th. Yeah, and I believe Avengers was like September 20th or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, so Cyberpunk 2077, which is by no means a family-friendly f- game, but is a juggernaut that is going to kind of dominate the conversation video game-wise uh, when it comes out, Is was originally a spring game. And in, in an announcement today, CD Projekt Red, the people that made the Witcher game, that's one of the reasons why people will recognize that company because uh, they make the Witcher game. So if you were watching the Witcher TV show on Netflix, you might have heard about the games. Uh, it's the same company that makes Cyber, Cyberpunk 2077, and that got moved. Um, and the multiplayer component, which was previously announced, got moved till 2021. So this is a pretty significant change. Um, but this is... I the, the, the general theme with all of these... And Jeff, tell me if you think I'm wrong... Um, there's never been a bad delay for me. Yes. And I, if you follow Engage Family Gaming's post, you will see I kind of posted a quote that Miyamoto, Miyamoto said. Yep. Um, and his quote, and it's not verbatim because I don't have it right in front of me, but his quote pretty much says, a delayed game can eventually be good, but a rushed game is bad forever. Correct. And – Man, listen, the video game public does not forgive games that launch buggy anymore. Um, no. People can patch it out, but people still – I, if people hear it's buggy, it's still delay. They don't sell as much as they would have if it was a perfect game. Correct. And CD Projekt Red wants this to be their jam. Like they want this to be another Witcher, another massive hit. That can probably be a cross media experience, etc. They need this one to just absolutely slay. So uh, they pushed it. Again, not family friendly, but I suspect lots of the gamer parents that are watching this will be playing it. Um, I- I'm going to be real. Um, this is going to sound really crazy. I didn't want to play this game. I was not going to play Cyberpunk. It was not going to be my jam. But now that they delayed it, I kind of want to play it. Is it because they're playing hard to get with me and I'm like, oh, you're delaying it, so now I've got to play it? Or I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Judge me. I I find this funny because I had no interest in this game either. Are you in now too? Like are we all of a sudden going to be cyberpunk buddies? I have – the thing that turned me off when they announced it was a fully first-person game. Can you play first-person games or do they make you sick? I'm just not good at them. Oh, okay. Well, I'm terrible at video <laughs> games just in general. So that doesn't bother me. Um, Nicole Tanner, a friend of the show, do. doesn't immediately was turned off by it because she can't play first-person games very easily. She gets super okay. motion sick. So See, I I will <laughs> say I've, I prefer a third person. So, for example, again, I'm going to put a disclaimer, not family-friendly. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Played originally on Xbox 360. Played it. It's a third-person game. When it came out for PS4, I did buy it again, and I did beat it in first person just to prove that I'm playing a different game. <laughs> just to make yourself feel better is what you're yeah. saying? That's yep. fine. Listen, everybody's – I'd play Horizon Zero Dawn if they put it in a first person mode, um, but I'm terrible at games, so like I'm not super worried about it. So Cyberpunk so, is 
you know, now I'm going to play all three of these games. Is ultimately yeah, what well, it comes and that's down the to. thing. How you are feeling about Cyberpunk, it's how I'm feeling about Avengers. Oh, so they delayed it and now you're in? Yeah, well, and here's the thing. Avengers should be a game I was – well, I was super excited when I heard it was just a logo. Yeah. And then they started kind of announcing it, and I've had ebbs and flows of excitement. They showed it off at E3 last year. I'm like, eh, this is okay. And I, but and don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those people who think, oh, why don't they look like the MCU? I understand yeah. different universes or different – yeah. Creative decisions. Also I read different com- universes. Yeah. Yeah. I I read the comics. I watch shows. You know, they don't all have to look the same. I just I watch them and play the games for the characters. Yep. Um, uh, and so it just wasn't. I didn't like the art style. It looked just kind of dark and gray. And to me, that's not Marvel. Yeah. It did look kind of like Nolan. Marvel's bright it looked colors. Like Nolan it's campy, Marvel. and it just it wasn't getting me. And then I. So I wasn't excited. I my excitement went a little bit farther when they, up when they announced Ant Man to be in it. Yep. I'm like, okay, that's great. Not the original five Avengers. Yep. At least we can get. And then it went a little farther when they announced Miss um, Marvel. Yep. Because I'm like, oh, the, now they're bringing in you know not some of the core popular characters. Yep. It's true. I mean that is. Um, that, that was one of the things that got me. I mean, the reality is I have to play this game because eventually Vision's going to be in it. So, like, I just don't have a again. choice. Um, so, I, I, it was Vision that got me, and he's not even announced yet. But, of course, the Vision is going to be in it. So, um, I'm excited for it. Um, we'll be Avengers buddies. Oh, we lost Jeff. He left me again. So, um, I'll just keep talking about it. Um, he'll come back in a moment, and we will just add him when he is there. So, um, by the way, everybody watching, if you have comments, questions, concerns, uh, feel free throw them in the chat. Let us know what's going. Uh, let us know what your feelings are. So, yeah, I mean the 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 Final Fantasy VII delay is a month, and I am pretty cool with it. Um. Oh, okay, gotta call Jeff on Skype again. How do I do that? Oh, here it comes. Oh, I don't think I can accept a call from him. I think I have to call him separately. So everybody, thank you for your patience with us as we muddle through technical difficulties. I'm so sorry. I do not know what the issue with my internet is today. Uh, it I, is. It's okay. It's okay. It's showing full bars and then it just cuts out. Well... Um, I don't know. Next week, we'll just restart our routers together um, <laughs> and make absolutely sure. So um, I was just talking with the uh, with the lone crew, talking about the uh, Final Fantasy VII, t- the Final Fantasy VII remake, which is a month. Um, I, it doesn't impact me really. At, the, the only impact that it has is that it comes out around the same time as Animal Crossing. And we in this household are already in for three copies of Animal Crossing physical. So I'm going to be going, and this is no joke. I'm going to be walking into a video game store and buying three copies of that game. So my three children can play. (laughs) Um, It is absolute madness, but um, it's definitely going to be their game of the year. So I can't wait to see this crazy stuff they do. They play it on their three DSs Now Um, it is possible. That means I'm going to have to wait to play Final Fantasy VII. And I'm kind of okay with that because I waited to play Final Fantasy VII the first time, so what's the difference? Does it change your plans? Uh, So I'm not super excited about Animal Crossing. I have not decided if I'm going to buy it yet or or not. Most likely, yes. I'm usually big into Nintendo first-party games. Yeah, we're looking behind you. (laughs) I was looking behind you and being like, really, dude? You telling me you're not going to buy a first-party Nintendo game? I mean, I I still don't have Link's Awakening. One. One. (laughs) You have one. You've held out on one. Okay, that's fair. I get it. Um, But I have a feeling that I'm going to be talking about it enough that you're going to be like, all right, I guess I got it. Because we're going to be playing it a bunch here so yeah um so man these games they're all it, the, the calendar is starting to push out starting to, to move around um i am 
you know another game that it's kind of getting out of the way of is uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon that's coming out in March also. That makes Pokemon Mystery Dungeon the first big Nintendo game of the year. Which is kind of interesting. What's the date on that? I thought... It's sometime in March. I thought it was the same day as Animal Crossing, which I thought was a bad choice. Well, not any... uh, I mean, I don't think so. I don't know. Let's look. The internet will tell us... Okay, so Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Switch release date. Um, My oldest, uh, it's March 6th. Okay, so it comes out uh, like a full month before Animal Full Crossing. month, okay. So um, my old, there's already a demo out for it. My oldest played it today. It's about an hour, hour and 20 minutes for the demo, and he's actually very excited for it. Um, he has declared that he will be spending his birthday money to buy that game, um, and that's fine. I wasn't really planning on getting it just because, I don't know, it's not like a real quote-unquote Pokemon game, but he's excited. He played it for an hour, and he's like, I'm in, so... I will say I definitely may order it. I come you definitely may. Yeah, I definitely yeah. Oxymoron there. Uh, come the beginning of March, I'm gonna go through a pre-ordering and pre-order a ton of stuff because my gamers club unlock ends at the end of March. Oh, so you're gonna have to put a bunch of money down on stuff early. Well, the best thing about Best Buy is. You pre-order, if you, as long as you have the funds in your account, it puts a hold on it, but then it puts the money back in until the actual game ships. Okay, and the the Gamers Club is over after this, right? Yeah, they completely canceled it. So I got mine like two months before they announced the cancellation. Now, how 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 much of a discount do you end up getting on games? Is it ten bucks? Twenty percent. So like ten bucks. So twelve dollars on a sixty dollar okay. game. So it's worth mentioning, Walmart sells all their all their Switch games for yes. fifty bucks. Yes, but the Walmart near me doesn't keep them stocked on the first day, and I'm a one who likes. Oh, I to know get you're it. one of those guys. I get it. Yeah. So am I. Um, so, uh, but just an FYI for everybody listening, Walmart sells games for fifty bucks now. I'm not yep. sure. When they made that, it was there was no fanfare. They didn't just say, "Hey, by the way, we're changing our pricing structure and selling all video games for fifty bucks," but they did. So if you, unless you're pre-ordering at games at GameStop or you know buying with Amazon gift cards or something, Wal- if you have a unless you have an ethical issue with using Walmart, which I totally understand, um, but if you are someone that is comfortable shopping at a Walmart, fifty bucks. Oh, um, je- oh, oh, uh, we have somebody, I believe that is, uh, your general, um, saying <laughs> you're going to talk to your wife about that. Um, Jesse, I will make sure that he does. Um, I will ensure that he clarifies with the general, um, because obviously he should. Um, you got to make sure that you don't, uh, go completely overboard. I mean, how many how many games could he possibly want to pre-order, Jesse? Like, all of them? I mean, it's only a lot. I mean, this is console year, so he's got to be a little bit more careful. I mean, we're still waiting on Nintendo's actual Direct, so... <laughs> could you imagine? Anyway, speaking of Nintendo Directs, we could talk about that. Um, also, hi, Jesse. Nice to, nice to chat with you, and thank you for watching the EFG show. I, I will be perfectly honest. She's probably only hearing my half of the conversation because she's okay. hearing me through our floors. Okay, well, can you tell her <laughs> – can you text her or something and, and say that I said thanks for participating? Um, she did ch- – she commented on our chat. So, she did. Anyway, so, um, okay. Let's, so we're done with the delays. Let's, t- let's just talk about it and get it out of the way. Today, Sakurai – had a little video that he posted that was recorded back in November where he announced the new the new <laughs> um yep she's listening she's actually watching <laughs> that's dedication I Jesse, know. we gave you credit as an anime connoisseur earlier on today by the way I just want to make that super clear <laughs> I was the one that said that you had impeccable taste even though I have no idea I just I'm assuming you do um so Sakurai had a live stream today. It wasn't a live stream. He posted a video today um, where he announced the fifth character in the Super Smash Brothers DLC pack. Um, man, these last couple days have been wild, Jeff. People were going crazy. I had the Infinite co-host text me 
saying, dude, I can't believe how hype I am for Dante to be in Smash. Like, he was absolutely convinced that Dante from Devil May Cry was going to be in Smash. I heard people saying things like, Dante. I heard people say, um, you know, my kids are desperate for Waluigi, but I keep telling them that's never going to happen. No, I heard Dante. I, I heard Beautiful Joe. I heard Sora. I heard all sorts of stuff. Crash Bandicoot. I heard Crash Bandicoot. Dragon. So, um... Claire and, Redfield, all Claire of them. Redfield. I mean, I, I, I didn't hear Claire Redfield, but sure, whatever. There well, I think rules. Leon. I've heard Leon more than Claire. Yeah. Um. And here we are. They announced another Fire Emblem character, specifically Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses being one of the EFG games of the year for 2019. Um, listen, it's a great game. Uh, it is not at all what people wanted. Um, no, like, not at all. There are. Here's the thing. I don't think it's a bad decision. I don't think it's going to be a bad character. I think it's no, cool. I Sorry. Go no, go I, ahead. It's not going to be a bad character. It looked fine. I just don't think it was revealed in the right slot. Yes, I agree. Um Banjo should have been last. Banjo should have been last. They I think he, he Byleth and I understand the game didn't come out at this time. Probably should have been in that E3 direct with two people. Um, how about, why don't you, yeah, I, I, how about it launch day, you announce Byleth as coming to Smash. You know what I mean? Launch day for Fire Emblem Three Houses. Like, yeah. they had plenty of other options, and you're absolutely right. They could have scrambled the order and finished it off with, because realistically, Joker could have gone last. If they knew all five of these before they started, which is, to my understanding, what happened. Yeah, they say they already know the next six. So, yeah. so you got to think about the order. This is like entrance to the Royal Rumble, right? Literally, this is kind of how I imagine it, right? If we're going to go full wrestling, um, which you and I inevitably do, right? This is like your order entering the Royal Rumble. I, it matters. I, yes, can I? I have a perfect analogy. Go ahead. Let me get the year right. 2014. 2014 Royal Rumble, I believe. I may have the year wrong. It's getting ready for the final entrant in the Royal Rumble. Everyone is waiting for Daniel Bryan. It was when it was before he got injured. Yep. Because they expected him to win it. Number 30 ended up being Rey Mysterio, one of the most liked people in, yep. in the wrestling universe, for those of you. like He has never been a bad guy. It is impossible for people to boo this man. And he got booed out of the building that day. Yeah. That's kind of what's happening to Byleth right now. If yeah. this was a wrestling arena, he'd be booed out of the building, even though he's a good guy. Yeah, and yeah. which is not supposed to happen. And it's sad. The character looks cool. The moves look cool. The stage looks cool. It's just, you're yeah. right. This should have been the number two DLC character. Or maybe the first DLC character. Or the third. Something like that. People got way too hyped. And... Because it was four, and, and let's just go through all the characters. The first one was Joker from Persona. The second one was Hero from Dragon Quest. Uh, the third one was Banjo-Kazooie. The fourth one was Terry Bogard from King of Fighters. And now we have, um, going back to the Nintendo side, the reality is there were too many options for people to let their imagination run wild. Because yeah. we didn't... Well, go ahead. Well, and... Nintendo is infamous for doing, you know, each of their directs always ends. Oh yeah, here's one more thing. Yep, I was. I the, well, there one more thing. This was... was their chance to have one more thing. Yep, I, and that's not saying I wanted them to announce another character, but they always end their directs off with a bang, and this one went out with a whimper. Well, this one, the one more thing was that they have the DLC, um, that they already have six characters in the next pack. And that they've already been chosen. That was their one more thing, more or less. Like, hey, this is the fifth character. We have six more coming. Um, we're excited for it here. The the, the you know we're we've already bought the pass. The character. I mean, yeah, to I, us. I bought the pass. I'm excited. I'll play it. I will. The character will come out, and I will play for a couple weeks and try to get more. And like, oh, I need more spirits now because for some reason I'm crazy and trying to get all the spirits. I think you I'm are... at like. You Over are, a thousand now. You are, in fact, crazy. But so here's the thing, <laughs> though, right? Like, 
I, lots of comments being like, man, there's only like one character out of this whole pack that I want. Well, it's like, then buy that one character and save yourself 20 bucks because you can buy them individually. That's the one thing that really helps me is that this is a la carte unless you buy the whole pass. We yeah. bought the whole pass because there were multiple characters that were part of this set. Um, we're going to buy the whole pass for the next one. Six new characters is... Same, same here. I'm... I'm a Super Smash Brothers super fan. I love the series. I love the uh, waiting for the announcements of who's going to be in it. I love the reveal trailers. I I mean, it's a video game to me. It's Super Smash Brothers is the equivalent as the equivalent to an online video game museum you will ever get. Yep, it is. And the, so we got six new characters coming. So Byleth is cool looking. Got a big old axe, got a big old pole arm, got a big old bow. I'm guessing those are very... They, it sounds like those are very important to the plot of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, just his sword. You can get the other weapons, but the sword's the main one. All right. Cool. I, I'm, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I play the game because it is on the list. Now that I think about it, I, I got to play... I, I, for me right now, it is the d internal debate. Do I rock Fire Emblem or do I rock Dragon Quest? In, in what order um and now we got um tokyo mirage sessions it's just so decisions decisions adulting is hard so um okay we have six characters coming in the next pack um and you're gonna be able to so he said that, that you'll be able to pre-order that new D dlc pack before they announce the characters in it um but i can't imagine that they will make us wait very long so Here's my question. Who do you think is going to be in that DLC pack? That's a very have, loaded question. You have one guess. I'm not asking for the whole six. Somewhere in that six, who do you think is going to be in it? <sighs> okay. I know the now, obvious one you're going to say, so just get it out of the way. I want... There's the one I want the most, and there's the one I think has more... Go ahead and say it both. Here. There's no cops. We've got time. So the one I want the most, Sora. Of course, I knew that one was coming, so I figured we would just get that one out of the way. What do and you think could... is? What do you think is gonna happen? I think it has to be Crash's time, right? I mean, he, I would save money if they were to do Vegas odds, which I would be super amused to find out. He has to be the odds-on favorite to appear in this set. I'm not gonna say he's the first one, but I think if ever there was a character that was more that was likely to be one of the six. I feel like Crash Bandicoot is the appropriate call. It makes perfect sense. And to be honest, and I was talking about this with one of my friends, we would, I, we both agree that we want, you know, they don't really announce a lot of cartoony characters as these DLC. You have Banjo Kazooie, and that's it. Yeah, the rest of them have all been dudes. Yeah. Well, yeah, waiting. that that was kind of a bummer too. Like I was expecting the last one to be at least a female. I know Byleth can be male or female, but still, still, yeah. No, I get it. Um, okay, so you think so you want Sora? Yes, but you I think, think Crash will be Crash. one of the six? Yes. Magical Christmas Land. What if it's both? How crazy is that? There's six slots. Um, okay, I honestly believe one of those six characters will be Sub Zero. You think so? Yep. With Bayonetta broke all the rules, man. If they'll let Bayonetta True. in. If they will let Bayonetta in. Because here's the thing. You might think, oh, well, what about Scorpion? He's right? way more. He's Scorp Scorpion is impossible to do without, like, blood and guts and gore. Yeah. Sub-Zero Sub just freezes people. Sub-Zero could absolutely be PG'd. And yeah, he just freezes people and punches the crap out of them. Um, I am, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a betting man. Nicole Tanner ruined that for me, <laughs> but I am, I strongly believe that one of those six characters will be Sub Zero, and I will stand by that until the sixth character is announced. Um, I think Dante is probably an okay choice too, but I'm. I really want to be the. I I am gonna take that choice, take that chance, and be the guy that predicted Sub Zero. Um, yeah, I, would, I would also love Lloyd from Tales of the Abyss. Uh, listen, that sounds great too. Isn't Lloyd Tales of Symphonia though? Is Lloyd? Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Lloyd's the red guy. Is the guy with the red shirt and like the white scarf. 
And I think that's Tales of Symphonia. Um, listen, he would also be cool. A Tales character would definitely be cool. Um, it, I mean, the reality is... Okay, some things... We do know some characters were ruled out. For example, we know Cuphead's not going to be in there. He got a costume today. They put Altair in this. Now, here's here's what's interesting. That surprised me. They put Altair in. Now, by the way, I am... Bo- Bef- I am spending 75 cents for the outside year sword fighter costume because that costume is rad. They put an Assassin's Creed character in here. Now, so anybody that wants to be like Steve, they're not going to put the... I, they put Bayonetta and Altair in Smash. Sub-Zero is as bad as those two guys. So they open the door. Now... Is it possible that they might put Scorpion and Sub Zero um, me costumes as opposed to move sets? Absolutely, and that would be awesome, like a Mortal Kombat costume set. Actually, I would almost want that more. So then you could have a me dressed up like Raiden. Just imagine it for a minute. <laughs> um, I almost want that more, but um, they put us. They put Altair in there, which means, does that mean Ezio could be actually in the game? Is it possible? That's true. I didn't think of it that way. Like, you know. So, do you stand on the side of me costumes will never get a chance to be a character in this game? or As of right now, they have not broken that wall. And so I gotta stick with it. And same with assist trophies. If they're assist trophy or a me character, they probably will not make it as a full. That is my opinion. They have not That's broken what... that rule yet. And so I have to assume some laws. Otherwise, everything's crazy. And that's why people like uh, Gino will never be a character. Who? Uh, Gino Gino's... from Super Mario. What's Gino? Is he an assist trophy? He's a, a me fighter outfit. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. I completely forgot about Gino, that. Gino, uh, Isaac from Golden Sun. Yeah. Waluigi. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about Waluigi. That dude's not going to be in Smash. Especially since... He has an assist trophy, and one of Luigi's alternate colors is him. Yeah. And again, I repeat while while staring at my children, <laughs> while Luigi will not be in Smash. Um, I'm not saying I'll trade the game in if they put him in, but I would be displeased. Um, you know who I would really like? Who? Rillaboom from the new Pokemon game. Oh. Okay, that would be rad. Rillaboom. I just thought of that, like, at this moment. This is a live thought. I think out of the three starters, he has the most chance. Well, also, hold on. Uh, Cinderace looks like a character that would fight in Smash also. Oh, true, Cinderace. I... But we already have the fire starters, even with Charizard being... I mean, he's not his own no, character. I'm down. Rillaboom would be so cool. Um, But also, like, what about one of the gym leaders? You know? um, I mean, we... that's possible, too. Um, It's crazy just thinking about all these possibilities and we have six DLC slots left to fill for smash. Um, it'll be very interesting. So you're going on record as saying crash bandicoot. I'm going on record as saying sub zero. We're going to have to see who wins. Um, I'd love to hear everybody, you know, watching this video, throw out into the comments. Who do you think will be in the next smash DLC? Um, so last bit of news, this is less video games and more hopping over to the other side of the fence. Uh, to the ta- to the tabletop area first. Um, everybody who plays MTG Arena, uh, I'd like to just let you know that uh, the Theros Beyond Death expansion set is expansion set. They don't call them that. Uh, the the Theros Beyond Death set is available in MTG Arena starting today. And if you just do enter the code Play Theros, you get three free packs. Um. I am going to be recording a audio podcast with Evan over the weekend where we talk about the new set and we talk about the mechanics and go through that so you can follow the Engage Family Gaming podcast feed if you are interested in that product. Um, but it's cool. It's based on Greek mythology. So it's some, you know, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, if you are a Magic fan, you were already super hyped about this because it's been spoiler season for the last month. So, yeah. Yay us. Um, also, for those Critical Role fans, 
Um, if you're not familiar with Critical Role is, it's a live play Dungeons and Dragons campaign that used to be with Geek and Sundry, and now they're all on their own. Is getting its own Dungeons, it's getting its own D and D source book from uh, written and really primarily designed by Matt Mercer, who's the DM of the Critical Role game. It's called The Adventurer's Guide to Wild Mount, and it sounds bananas. Um, new subclasses for all the different classes. A uh, whole new, you know, religion and a whole new map, all sorts of new stuff. There's some people hating on it because apparently it's not like real D and D or whatever. I I don't know. It's got time mages in it and stuff, so I'm in. Um, that's gonna be coming out later on this year. Uh, already are they spoiling it with uh, some live videos that are hopping up on Facebook. So if you're a Dungeons and Dragons fan, this book like it looks like it's gonna be pretty cool, Jeff. I'm pretty excited about it. Because they got time mages and gravity mages, and they haven't announced everything else yet. Because this is like this week, so that's all the news, Jeff. All right, yeah, that does sound cool. Uh, actually, I do have one more bit of video game oh news that I saw earlier today. What happened? Um, they announced the story character set for the Fire Emblem's Three Houses. Oh yeah, a new DLC, right? Yeah, DLC. Uh, it's going to add a fourth house, I believe, the Ashen Wolves. Sure, sure. Sounds great. Uh, that's all I really know. I've only played through one of the stories, but they gonna, so they gonna they gonna get the blue barracudas in there next. The silver the, monkeys, the no. silver monkeys, the orange iguanas, the orange iguanas. I would absolutely like somebody's got to make that meme. <laughs> somebody's got to make that meme. Um, in fact, I think it should be us. Uh, so, man, we did it. It's one more EFG show in the books. All right. So everybody. Thank you very much for listening to Jeff and I and suffering through our technical problems with us. I had mic issues in the beginning. He had some uh, internet issues. Um, he got heckled by his wife. I mean, that was worth it for me. Because um, Lord knows I've been heckled enough by my wife throughout EFG history. So, everybody, you have yourself a great night. We're going to be back next week with more news. Hopefully continuous news because this has been exciting there's been like stuff to talk about um but until next time don't forget to get your family game on hey we're we're, we're getting it we're getting the timing down on that everybody have a good night bye now bye <laughs>